Okay, now we can we can have some questions. Yes. Uh, you mentioned earlier the the separation and seeing through the illusion um, and that the presence of God is ever present. It's always here. Why do we distance ourselves from that? Because we are trained to think that joy or peace or happiness is in the world. From our early childhood, we are being trained to acquaint with the objects of the senses. And by that process we have learned that when I can con connect with the object of the senses, with the sense, then I get joy. Mm -hmm. Suppose this cake is there <coughs> and I put it in my tongue. That's the object. And tongue is the sense organ. <coughs> when it is different, there and here, I don't find joy. When I put it in my tongue, then I feel, wow, it is joy. <laughs> <laughs> and when I feel once it is wow, then I like it again, second time. <laughs> then I like it third time. So it becomes habituated that we are familiar with this type of engagement into the world and its apparent achievement of joy or pleasure, whatever you find. We do not know, we have never been trained to think that there is something higher. It is more, more abiding, more peaceful. That's why people are struggling now to get the same joy through meditation. Meditation has become a, a present day uh, habit for even those who are uh, believers in God or not God is not the question. Meditation is uh, releasing them from the uh, apparent suffering and other things, no? Withdrawing the mind, becoming peaceful more. They're becoming peaceful. So we had not been trained that way. And, and if we can learn gradually now, now, yes, I have tested what this cake can give me, then we go for different other things. Ice cream. How does it? And then ice cream I tasted and different varieties of ice cream. Oh, this is better than this. This is better. Our life goes on testing and saying hi, which is better, better, better. Eh? Then we get a point when we find that even testing through the food, maybe all types of available uh, ice cream, all types of available cake, all types of available things which tongue can satisfy. Then we see that I have eaten so much, but still my appetite is not satiated. What shall I do? Then come, can I find it anywhere else? That finding to try to find anywhere else gives you a boosting. Then you can think, okay, I can see the God's blessings, the beautiful nature in every leaf, the shining nature of every leaf can give me joy. You are entering into the joy, but it is limited joy, tongue to bottom, that's gone. But you can enjoy looking at the nature quite time. And you can absorb that joy. Rising sun. You can go to the beach and sit there and see how the crimson color is coming and so the darkness is disappearing and the sun is rising, 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 you know. And, and you can carry that impression in your mind. Even you can ruminate over that as a memory. So you can remain in joy in a different level, higher level. This is training. Train the mind to go like this, this, this. When you get a glimpse of higher joy, then you will not be interested in this world. When you get a touch of 
hundred thousand dollars job, you don't go for forty thousand dollars. You are not interested in it <laughs> because you got hundred thousand already. So you will be interested in hundred fifty thousand. No. So that is our journey towards infinite. It continues and continues and continues. And sometimes we doubt: Is there any joy? Everything is here momentary and it ends. Is there any joy which unending is possible? Then we search for that. Mm -hmm. And we find some testimony in Christ, in Buddhas, in Ramas, in Ramakrishna. <coughs> they are the people, they are nothing bothers them. Anything happens in this. This it is so many unimportant and then look for the higher joy. So looking at them we can get inspired. Oh that may be a process. That's why millions and billions of people are following Buddhism. Not today, last two thousand five hundred years. Many millions and billions has, have have tried to follow the path of Christianity, Christ, no? So these are the process what where we can get to the higher and higher fusion that our then will come the knowledge oh ho, we are foolishly eh, roaming in the world to get a bit of that joy and we have so much here so do we come here to separate from the joy and then remember it like take the journey with no distance that's that's mostly what I'm yeah I think maybe that it is not for that but we we take a took a decision as I give the example, sometimes we go for hiking on a holiday. Why would you go hiking? You can have a good meal and relax and watch television and enjoy sleeping. You are hiking, bothering your knees and legs. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes you may sleep and fall down and break your something. Or better example, you go for skiing or going for something. <laughs> or scuba diving, whatever you, it's troublesome. Why you go? You don't go to feel that I am going for pain, but you go have higher joy. <laughs> but in that process we get pain. No, Similarly, we came in the world to find joy this way, losing our own ground of reality, not for any other purpose, but to enjoy more. But in the process of coming to enjoy more, we are enjoyed now. Mm -hmm. Enjoyment is enjoying us. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mommy, um, in regards to kind of what you were saying as far as um, the why, why are we here because, you know, is it, is it to remember what we've forgotten? And it, it, it strikes me because I, I think about, you know, learning how, you know, and, and the first time looking at, at, at you know coming back of being raised a Christian, having having the reincarnation and coming back and, and that, that each life that we have um, we are we, we we gain some 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 inner wisdom and knowledge of, of God. And um, people have asked, you know, do we remember that when we when we were born? And it's like, okay, well, you know, some of that that that, that, that doesn't go away, but it's, it, we have to reconnect and, and on that path and that journey that God wants us to to understand things. So it, in, a, in a way, it is a remembrance. Um, you know, I don't know how, you know, things originated where we became separated from God. You know, it, it, it's, it's, it's the, it's the it, it, and this whole like, little chess game that they play, you know, with our lives as far as Satan, God, the, the Job story and everything like that. Um, but, but the thing is, is that, you know, one of the things, and I don't know if there's any truth to that, but um, if there's any connection to that, but that even when they talk about the angels in heaven, how they're thrown, how they're thrust to, down here, that they were spiritual beings, and so they were separated from God. So, it's, so in essence, we have also have our separation from God. And we need to reconnect. Um, so it is very much a, it is a very much a um, recognizing. Yeah. Like, like how, what they say in, in, in you know, Kavante is recognizing our spiritual beings and, and that we are spiritual, that we are. Yeah, we are not separated at all, but we are separated in a sense because we are not aware of it. Yeah. That's good. 
uh, we cannot be separated at any point because if we are separated that that moment i am gone this body mind all will go my identity my life this this breathing so i am not disconnected but i am not aware you are having the golden chain in your uh, in your neck and you are searching for that where is that golden chain <laughs> so one day you recognize oh it is here it was here all the time here but you only because of it this process in which we want to live in our life we was looking and there is beautiful song of rabindranath tagore <coughs> he says amar piyar majhe lukiye chile dekhte tumai paine ami dekhte tumai paine ami bahir pane mukh dekhechi tumar pane chaine oh lord amar hiyar majhe lukiye chile you are hiding in the core of my heart ami dekhte tumai paine i didn't i could not see you tumi mor anondo hoye chile amar khelai you were with me when i was in having a fun and joy you are the joy of that you are with me as joy and i only looked outside ami bahir pane chok melechi our eyes i have opened my eyes to see only the external ami ridoy pane chai ne i didn't look it here I was searching everywhere, but I didn't look at it. Like the necklace, it is here all the time. But I was searching in the table, in the drawer, in the this room and that room, and where did I keep? I lost and I cried and wept and everything, and ultimately you find that oh my God, it is here. So that is the Tagore's beautiful song. That actually our whole it is not lost. At this moment, it is here. Now it is here. Only we have to assert. We have to assert it. We have to acknowledge it. We have to. We have to repeatedly listen about this so that that conviction comes. When a you know psychological patient, what happens? Sometimes they get ingrained into certain thought which is not true. What you have to do to counter thought? Put counter thought again and again, again and again to bring back to the reality. So our spiritual life is to. Have a counter thought, thinking that it is here, it is here. Vedanta is the greatest support for that. Vedanta says, "Say, yeah, I am that, I am that, day and night say." Or a devotee will say, "I belong to you, Lord. You are with me. You are with me. You are with me. Please allow me to see you. Huh? Please allow, give me the strength to realize you or, or experience your presence. It is here, but to experience is a different thing." Thing may be here, but you may not experience. So experience is your knowledge, eh? or uh, knowledge means the knowledge about the truth. It can be connected with love. It can be connected by selfless activity, all these prayers and meditation, which I referred, and the scriptures support that. Hmm? There's two kind of people who understand God, sing, uh, praise, songs, religious music, chanting, and lift their spirit. And then there's people who are fighting wars and differences and all. So people misunderstand God or understand God. So what is misunderstanding God? That's what I'm asking. I mean, you misunderstand what God is, but it's not God. The mis misunderstand means. What is understanding means as it is, misunderstanding is wrongly understanding. The wrong understanding may be of varied degrees. When you 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 put some misconception, mm -hmm. it is misconception uh, is something which is created by your mind. 
So our mind creates those misconceptions. How shall I be happy? Someone say, I will, by giving my love and my everything for the good of others. And how shall I be happy? If I can kill somebody, I can take away his money, I can abuse him or her, take the wealth in my pocket, that will make me happy. So this is understanding, is the mental level. People act, action comes later. But the impetus comes from your understanding. What is the understanding? Everyone in the world is seeking for joy and joy and joy. Everyone, to the thief, to the serial killer, to the person who is giving his life for protecting someone, to the person, a brute, who is misbehaving and taking away the peace of others, everyone is searching for joy, 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 joy. But does not know. Is directed or misdirected? Who is misdirecting? Their mind is misdirecting. The whole world is nothing but our mind. All the conflict and fight is between your mind and my mind. Your mind gives you your understanding. My mind gives me my understanding. But when it is, that's why we are talking about purified mind. When your mind will be purified, my mind will be purified, I will see the same thing, you will see the same thing. Christ and Buddhas and Ramas and Krishnas and the saints and seers all see the same thing. I, I talked about Tagore just now. He is talking about the same thing which Upanishad says that you know, O oh Lord, you are seated in my heart, in the cave of my heart. I didn't recognize you and I was searching you for everywhere. Hmm? But I never turned my camera selfie. <laughs> I was taking the picture this way all the time. We didn't touch it. So that is the that is the statement of Tagore. The same in the Upanishad, in the in the in the court of Upanishad said, the Paran Chikhani Vatinat Swambhu. Swambhu means the Lord created this universe by focusing all our senses outside. See, eyes only can see outside. Eyes cannot see what is in your mind, in your inside. Eyes cannot see. Ears can hear only external sound. It cannot see what is the internal voice. It cannot. So all the senses are focused outside. Therefore we see God created this way. External object and this. Like they know, no child. When the child is in playful mood, come in, there must some sit. Here you can sit. There are, come in. In this, in this here you can have one. So, in the <coughs> child, to please the child, what mom does? Brings one toy after another toy. Is it not? It is pleasing the child. So, God, we are children of God. <coughs> God created so many things to please, to, 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 for giving me joy. And bringing the baby, little one toy, and when he's tired, <laughs> then another toy, another toy, another toy. So, God has created this toy world. Huh? And we are happy with this and that and that and that. But Ramakrishna's example, when the baby will be tired of the toys and say, no, I don't want, I want to go to mommy. <laughs> and actually when the baby cries like mommy, mommy, mommy and throws away the toys, what happens? <laughs> mommy comes <laughs> and grabs the baby. <laughs> is it not? Yeah. So this is the same thing. The world is created not to terrorize us, not to punish us, not to do anything. Only to feel the connection of mommy's love is how deep is the mommy's love. Hmm? So you try to find that su substitute with the toy, outside toy. These outside toys can give you the joy. It can give momentarily. The children are so happy. See how, how many times they are playing and doing like that. And when the baby gets tired, then mommy is so intelligent, brings another one. <laughs> because she has some business to do. <laughs> Amiji, I mean, why is that some people never get tired? I mean, they keep putting everything... No, they will have to get tired, not in the one life. <laughs> this is a long journey. 
Yes. Swamiji, from your, um, your talk today, which uh, I'm sure inspiring. Thank you very much. Uh, if our goal is to eventually see God, to want to see God, because by seeing God or realizing God, we attain this eternal joy, endless joy. In your talk today, you mentioned some of the things we can do to help us to see God. Sarvanam, Kirtanam, listening to the word of the Lord, you know, hearing. What are some of the things you would recommend or suggest that we should do in order to help cultivate God? That uh, yes. elevate the, the, the yeah. direction to yeah. be able to realize God. Right, right. It is, it, as I said, we have to, uh, taking pictures of the outside world, we are engaged 24 hours. Eyes, getting one bombardment of information, ears, bombardment of information, nose for the smell and fragrance, tongue for food, skin for touch, 24 hours engaged. I have no time to take a selfie picture of myself. So try to make a time for taking the picture what is inside. This time I am not going to do anything. I will sit and see who is in me. <coughs> That's called meditation. <coughs> That's called prayer. It should start with morning, evening, night time. When in between two works, I get little time. And then, <coughs> if that becomes the prime journey, then we'll have to, how to bring into my action the same what is inside. How can I try to impose in this visible universe? What is this universe? Is it not God? We have to bring this awareness. It is God. Only I am viewing is it as world, as good, as bad, because my mind. So let me project in my day-to-day -day activity, what I see, I am seeing God only. My mind is interpreting it, something else. First, it will be intellectual. <clears throat> but with the practice, if we can connect with this, what will happen? Suppose you have a good meditation, you try to think about God in your heart, and just open the eyes, and then you see, at that moment, the nature you see, every day you see, you will find it carries some love. You feel some affinity for that. You will feel some different mood comes in you. And you find some joy here, if that meditation is here. Now, how can I continue that spirit in all my actions, all my thoughts, 24 hours? We are to survive in the world for, for our survival mode, you have to go to office, you have to do your job, you have to do everything in home. <coughs> but bring a spiritual ideal there. It is all the service to God. Because God is everywhere. I am only misinterpreting it as the world. No? Given the example, um, it is so simple when the examples are given. Suppose in the ocean, you go to the ocean and see every Ripple, wave, bubble, foam, they are all different. And the whole infinite number of billion, trillions of waves, ripples, bub bubbles, all are active. You may focus and name one in one way called bubble. You may name tsunami. You may name, a, it is called the wave. You may call it foam. But you are giving names, but it is all the same, made of what? Ocean water. It is the ocean, nothing but ocean. It is the same H2O. So it is the same God everywhere. When it is calm and serene, no wave, that is perfectly peaceful here inside. And when it is wavy, this is all for me. We are, we are all, so many waves here, sitting. Can you not think? These are always made of God in this form, in this form, in this form, in this form. 
It is internal. It is no one will know. We can sit down and we can really think. Whenever in your, in your hustle and bustle of life, we can apply this philosophy. That who am I seeing? Who I am thinking as a man, woman, as good, bad. These are all nothing but the same one entity appearing to me because of my mind, mental condition as diverse and because of your mental situation you are seeing me this way. But if you can wipe out the mind up, then what will remain? What is the issue? Connection. connection. Eternal connection. Absolute <laughs> connection. So we can practice this in the morning, you know, deep meditation. And now, you know, prayer to God, Oh Lord, you are everywhere. Uh, give me the vision so that I can acknowledge you, I can realize you, I can understand you. No? Prayer, analyze as we have said and this is the process of analysis. I am see seeing different forms but they are made of the same constituent element. That is a mature state when you can feel that it is, he is there. I, who am I, what am I to pray? He is there. Yes. But that should be convincing and it should be not intellectual. You should feel that. You should feel that in, in your, your presence, God is here now. And Brother Lawrence, practice of the presence of God all the time. Thinking of uh, the uh, presence of the Lord and he felt. And that was the experience. Experience will be tangible then. The first it, it is intellectual, next it goes to the deeper realm, conviction and then becomes realization, you feel every pore of your body, you will feel the presence of the Divine. So this is the process probably through our karma, through our meditation, through our analytical process. Eh? All these yogas people talk about or whatever faith we, we have our faith and trust in the tradition to follow that keep the mind in God simple how we can keep the mind in God and this world is full of distraction <coughs> that's as I said because God wanted to give the toys and keep us engaged for fun for mother it is fun for the child also it is fun but when the child does not want anymore, then mother is there for him. <laughs> mother will come instantly. There is a song even in Bengali song that mother wants to take the baby in her lap. But only mother wants to hear the word, Oh, ma, ma, ma. Only to hear the word ma. That will let the child baby cry, ma, ma, ma. Then she feels more at, more. <laughs> That is her joy. Unless she, she calls, the baby calls. Mom thinks he's busy. He's later be busy. <laughs> yeah, you are saying something. Achha. Hmm. Uh, Swami, can one say um, the original sin or mistake is the belief that uh, we are separate? So, let us not dwell on the original sin anymore. <coughs> That's the Vedantic way. What is done in the past is forget. What I can do now, at this moment, can I feel this moment connected with God? Let's finish. 
in the past mistake has happened whatever for reason i accepted it huh? past is past live in the present and, and Yeah, yeah. It becomes a world of joy uh, when we can get out of this this distance. Then you find that is Lord playing. It is the fun. Everything is fun. <laughs> All the waves and ripples of the, see in the ripple you can see one ripple falling upon other with love, merging together. Another violent crashing another. Uh, one is rolling one another. So these are all fun. It's all play of the one Lord, beloved Lord. I am playing with myself. Uh, like that, you know, you stand sometimes, you stand before two, three, four, five mirrors and you make a posture, gesture, a reflection will be in five mirrors. If the mirrors are different curvature, see, there is a fun. It distorts your face. Suppose convex may mirror will give you the face like that. Boom. <laughs> Concave means no, like this. <laughs> but these are all fun because you are standing before the mirror, knowing that it is my reflection I am seeing. So there is the joy. That is that is the joy we are asking for. But to reach that point, first we'll have to see God everywhere. <laughs> you are saying something. No, judgment and criticism, we should not be blind. Mother didn't say that the, the world is full of good people. She didn't say. He knew that the decoit was a Muslim, decoit was a Muslim, decoit was a decoit. Uh, he goes to her jail now and then because of his activity. But mother's love is unconditional there. You are a decoit, I love you in the form of decoit. Not you have to be a sadhu, then I will then love you. Our love is conditional, no? I love you so long, what I expect from you, you will behave like that. If you don't do, hmm? <laughs> our life flies away gradually, gradually. Reaction comes, resentment comes, and fight comes, no? But look at Holy Mother. Mother did not say, you become a saint and come to me, then I will love you. He came as a decoit and as a decoit, as he comes, mother was there for, oh, my child, you come. I didn't see you for a long time. What? Then he said, oh, mother, I was in jail. <laughs> Bas, mother didn't go further. Okay, okay. Now, Baba, come. <laughs> you, you look so, so tired and so messy. Okay, have some breakfast. So mother immediately sets the breakfast table. Huh? And giving the breakfast feeding her the man the decoit and then what he does then he said okay now you get a good sour go go into the that village ponds are available and so he went to the pond like this with bath oil and soap which he has not done for months maybe and then fresh new cloth and all mother served everything as a decoit she is serving so mm -hmm. As they are yeah. in their mental and, and love conquers. We have to take this philosophy. If it is unconditional love like that mother, mother didn't do anything. But you know, the whole village, no one touched that village. Not any, any attack of robbery in that village happened. Because of love. She didn't say that, oh, you, you, Amzad, you have come, you protect this village. No. She only gave love, and not only to Amzad, but to so many, whoever went in whatever condition, in their condition, mother loved. So we have to learn, uh, it is a difficult thing, but, <coughs> but that is the sign of great spirituality. Swamiji. Okay, she, she is trying to oh, say. Huh. Oh, uh, uh, my 
thing was, um, there was a time in, in, when, for me, I used to look at people with the same heart that I had, and, and because maybe maybe it's because sitting down and having conversations with them, I would have really good conversations with them, and, and I would really, well, one instance where there was somebody who I totally, completely respected, um, and, be, and because of, of, we sat down and had hours and hours and hours of long conversation, and um, and I, I saw them as, as, as me, as, as matching the same type of person that I was, and who other than I needed, offered to help me move, and he stole my whole record collection. Um, so for me, it was like a huge lesson for me is that just because somebody speaks a, a certain way, um, also this person we've had, had been clean for like, um, I don't know, 15, 20 years. But the thing is, is that he may have walked the walk, but he still had the, the, the shady types of things that were connected to his addictions that he never, he never had um, worked with him and let go. So um, it, it, it made me realize that I couldn't trust everybody like I would normally. So it's also sometimes that I think... Um, That's why it is said, Moni the practical suggestion, that um, seeing God does not mean that you go and hug a tiger. <laughs> hug a tiger. No, 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 no. Tiger, from, from that person, the tiger means if you have the capacity, if you are really spiritually so rich that you can convert that person, then you do. Otherwise, you will be swallowed into that uh, tiger. So n normally, it is that's why we have to protect ourselves also and know our strength and how far I can do. You cannot go and change a uh, person who is uh, too much of negativity. Uh, you can, but you can behave with that person with honor and respect. But but they will not be able to understand your sensitivity unless their mind is deceptive to this. So it needs also spiritual maturity uh, and to do <coughs> Holy Mother is Holy Mother, she is the mother of the universe, she can do that. It may, it may be realized. But you have, you can do in your own, own level up to certain point. Yeah, but beyond be that you cannot do. But respect is okay. Respecting everyone does not yeah, take anything. It may be realized that I can, I, I can from a distance. I don't, I don't have to think that everybody yeah. is like yeah. you just because. Right. We yeah. should not have to think everyone will be because there I am. No, because they cannot change their nature, no? It takes time. As we are trying to change our nature, spirituality is what? Changing our nature. Yeah. Yeah. Changing our <laughs> lower nature to higher nature. I said, who was telling something there from question? Ah. No, I got my answer. Ah, <laughs> yeah, you know, we cannot change anyone. Unless, suppose you cannot change me unless I want to be changed. Yeah, what I went through is because I, I can't just, my sister tells me that I am too, um, I'm, I'm too trusting of people. And, yeah, so, and, so, so you and, should. And, and, that, and that did teach me a lesson is that, you know yeah. what, that everybody in the program is it's working a good program. Yeah. Even if they're speaking, it's that, that, that they're a team, that they're a team for me. I know, I know it. And there's another person that I, that in the program who I came across who ended up having a lot of, Let's put it this way. I ended up having to get the person's DNA to put Project Sit Business, which is um, which is, is opened up a, a case that's been going on for four years. So it, it so it really that it was first the first one, then the second one, and so it's really taught me a lesson that just because a person is in the program and, and they've got years and years of sobriety does not mm -hmm. mean that they are somebody that you want in your life mm -hmm. because there are dangerous people who hide in those places. Yeah, we should, we should have to not to trust everyone. Uh, we should have general working trust. Mm -hmm. yeah. Working trust. But to make your life, life's partner, you should have be serious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should be serious. To see that way that really it means... Mm, but that's the point. Point is that first of all, we must have to be strong and spiritually powerful. Yeah. First inside. Yeah. And according to your power, then you can exert that for the good of others. Yeah. But without being not enough strong, if we try to change and correct others, or try to do good to others, 
it may not bring good result it will bring frustration and back to ourselves but from a distance we can respect everyone yeah yeah Totapuri, you are talking about the Totapuri's experience. Ramakrishna. The difference between like his uh, vision as a mother and then when he no. went and, uh, you know, near was. No. Mother form is a, see, it is like you are seeing this, this window. Mother, you cut a mother's image in the solid wall. So you started from there, what do you see? You see a mother form as it were. You come closer and closer and closer. You see the big, bigger perspective behind the infinite sky. Is it not? From here, what are you seeing? Sky and the window shape. Shape of the window. That window shape we call name and form. That is mother for Ramakrishna. When he was meditating, he is seeing. But who is seeing? Through the mother that infinite sky. But focus was on the shape of the window. Christ window, Mother window, Shiva window, Kali window, yeah. Ramakrishna window, whatever you do. Yeah. Then you go closer and closer and closer and you touch your eyes on the glass. What will see? This form will disappear. You will see the infinite sky only. And penetrate that. Then what will be? Only sky. The form is gone. So we start from form and start our journey and as you move in what we see in the in that form there is nothing but consciousness, the sky, Satchidananda, God. And then you go closer, closer, closer in your meditation when you merge there, then you see nothing but this consciousness. And that consciousness permeates everywhere. That ocean of Love and joy permeates everywhere. And and then you merge there, that who will say it is ocean, it is permeate it is permeating the you are seeing you are dead there. Your this little body mind conception dissolves there. And when you come back again, you come back with a new vision. And with that vision you see everything is pulsating in the same consciousness. Here what is in this room also space is there? The same space outside. So when you come out into the room again, you see the same space. But it's permeated with that consciousness, which you didn't see before. I, that means experiencing the Lord in particularly starting point sometimes to the form helps us. And then we go and see what is there. And when we come back again, then you see that it is outside, it is inside. It is everywhere. So it's like looking at the form, like you said, the Jesus or Rama or Ma, Mother, and that's what you're focusing on. But then once you get closer and closer, then you see God. Right. And then, and then you step back, and then God, you know, there's a point where you don't even have to look for a Christ. It is, it is it's God. It's everywhere. It's God. It's everywhere. everywhere. He is always with us. Yeah. Okay, almost it is one, five past one. So you should read <laughs> the Gita, Bhagavad Gita. Which Which page? Okay, 758, we are reading the Bhagavad Gita, this chapter is 15 chapter and 6 or 7 verses. We finish the 5 verses, no? Okay, so we'll... Eh? So 5 verse, what we see? Who is it's a, talking about the mukti or freedom? Freedom. Uh, who can be that? Which competent one? 
to attain to this freedom. We are talking the same language, now in a different language. What we talked before, we are talking in a different way. That that cosmic consciousness which is permeating everywhere, how can you reach that? What are the characteristics we need to develop in our life? So it's, we said that free from pride and delusion, the person should be free from ego and sense of uh, that I am somebody rather than bigger than you. This type of arrogance, pride and delusion with the evil of attachment conquered. The attachment is a normal nature of ordinary people. We are attached to this worldly different subjects. This person should be has conquered, he is not attached. That means he has the idea of detaching from the external and attaching to God. Detaching from the external, attaching to God. Detaching from the name and form, wave, ripple, form, detaching from that name and form, seeing water, water, water. So who can do that? That is That quality is necessary. Ever dwelling in the self, he who thinks day and night about the divine entity which is called the self, Atman. It is here, it is there, it is there, it is there. Penetrating the outer form, they penetrate into inside and see the consciousness, that is the self. Their desires being completely stilled. Here, desire means this as we are talking this morning. Desire, we desire for so many things. Anything of the sensitive universe, eating, sleeping, touching, testing, all these things. If these desires are not satisfied, you cannot turn here. If you are very engrossed into those sensed experiences and you are happy, then you can wait for some time till this higher call tells you that it is not giving me that level of depth, that level of peace and joy, what I am craving for. So, that means who is matured enough that there this desire for petty things is not the thing I desire. I desire something higher, greater. Eh? I want to be billionaire, not penny, dealing with the ten, twelve dollars or hundred dollars, thousand dollars. I am not satisfied with that. That type of desire has come. I want the love of God. I want that type of ever-changing, unchanging, that joy. So, that person, that means there are good qualities we have to cultivate. We are talking about who will realize God, who can see God everywhere. It will not come by saying something. It will come only by cultivating these noble characteristics. It is a practice every day. Every day we practice this way, then all this quality. Liberated from the prayers of opposites, known pleasure and pain. We are always in the realm of pleasure and pain. Eh? This is pleasurable, this is painful. But one can really see in pleasure is also God's hand, in pain also God's hand. If one can see that God's hand in both, then, then God will be more real for him. In pleasure also he will feel the presence, touch of God. In pain also he will feel the touch of God. So this is the quality one have to uh, acquire. And the undeluded un reach that goal eternal. Who is undeluded? Deluded means misconception. No? Where deluded means you don't see the right thing. You see something which is not there. You, I say I was deluded. I was really confused, the same thing. So you are not taking the right thing in the right place when that misunderstanding type of mind is conquered, then you can be reach the goal eternal. That was the <coughs> quality. So he said, how many qualities said? And one quality is to be free from pride, arrogance and delusion, one. Two, Evil of attachment. Our mind is attached to so many things. That's why it does not get attached to God. It cannot do at a time. If you give the mind, mind is mind, one mind. You give it to God, it is there. If you give it to other thing, it is there. So, unattached, that means you have conquered your mind. 
dwelling, the mind dwelling in the self, seeing God here, seeing God there, is a practice. If you are practicing that, then their desires being completely still. That means, such maturity has come that I have tested this joy. But I don't find what I want. So I will search only in God. Like Ramakrishna gave the example. Example of the fly and the honeybees. Ramakrishna said bees and, and flies, there are difference. The fly can sit in the filthy thing, sometimes in the honey thing, sweet honey. But the honeybee, they will not sit unless it is honey. So matured mind will be honey mind. It will only sit there when it can suck the love of God. <laughs> and when is there is filthy, filthy means not that pure, you will not really sit. You may go there and run away. The flies, you see how they do. How the flies run away and the bees run away. Look at that. They will find that it's okay. It's not suitable for me. Run away from it. So mind should be like that. Seeing where is the pure joy. Pure unadulterated joy versus adulterated joy. Adulterated joy. Liberated from the pairs of opposites. Duality. Hmm? Pleasure and pains, suffering and joy, this, that, opposites. He has conquered. He knows in life it will come. No life is uh, continuous happiness or continuous pain. It is a mixture. It comes. But through these experiences, I get the touch of God. But the Rubinath Tagore has a beautiful... Tagore is a mystic poet, poet of Bengal. Uh, he is a Nobel laureate. He got the prize for these types of writing. What he write there? Jeke ho mure diye cho shuko diye cho tari pori chai tumare yami no mi Jeke ho mure diye cho dukho diye cho tari pori chai tumare yami no mi What a beautiful word. Anyone who have given me little joy and pleasure, O Lord, it is you who have given. I salute you. Anyone who have given pain, who can give me pain? It is you who came in that form and created that pain for me. I, I offer my pranam, a salutation to you. So in both the situations, it is coming from only one source and that is the divine. So that type of people so it is, a mature mind is necessary to feel like that. Uh, normal, our mind is reactionary mind. If I find joy, I am overwhelmed. If I find something bad, I get reactionary. Naturally, it is, it is, it is very natural. Now, <clears throat> but you are talking about this. What is the supreme state you are talking about? For which we are all talking that you should have to give up all desires, you have to be uh, pairs of opposites, should not trouble you. What are you talking? What is that state? That is the state you know. Beautiful verse 6. Na tadva sayati suryo Say with me. Na tadva sayati suryo Na shashanko na pavaka Na sha shanko na pavakaha yad gatva na nivartante yad gatva na nivartante tadham paramam mama tadham paramam mama he says that the sun illumines not this sun illumines the whole earth that that light is such light of the light. The sun cannot illumine there. That means it is self-refulgent. Shayam Jyoti is full of own in its own brilliance, in its own glory, in its own majestic glow. 
it is there there and neither the moon not the sun not the moon not the fire and that is the my supreme abode krishna says this is my abode my plane my plane of consciousness which permeates everything but the this sun does not shine there but it is all shining light this any joy of this world cannot touch that it is the source of all joy so that is my abode and going where you cannot you need not have to run, come back it's such a place of joy you will never be able to come out of that because it is eternal peace eternal joy see giving the concept why we are trying to not to get stuck into the world because it is only petty a little infinitesimal part of that joy if you can go there then there is no part there is no death there is it is beyond all the brightest thing in the world all the joys accumulated is nothing if you accumulate all the joys of the world is like a drop in that ocean of that joy so i am that joy so this is the direction sri krishna is directing everyone to think about that eternal abode <clears throat> then what is this universe with this people what we are seeing around i you all this these are called the jivatman jiva jiva means individual soul individual we are all individuals no what is this well it is only my parts i am the infinite as the christ said i am the vine ye are the branches in all philosophy it is there but people don't take it i am the bonfire you are a spark made of the same same element so the seventh verse says jivatman who is jivatman you me are not separate god is infinite but we are only little spark think that way then you you elevate yourself immediately you think that you are this little yes i may be little but i am a part of that cosmic and that cosmic is all joy all bliss i belong to that no your identification boost is giving a great boosting to that so it says seven parts mamai bangsho jiva loke say again mamai bangsho jiva loke jiva bhuta sanatana jiva bhuta sanatana mana sasthani mana sasthani indriyani indriyani prakriti sthani prakriti sthani karshati see you are all chanting sanskrit <laughs> wonderful see ah <laughs> uh, it is not that difficult then <laughs> don't be frightened <laughs> be bold so it says an eternal portion eternal portion of myself it is my is the capital god having become the jiva jiva is we are we individual we have become like this only infinitesimal part of that divine and attracts the senses with mind as the sixth abiding in the prakriti that this pure soul added with the senses and the mind understand we are all part of the cosmic fire but as individual you are seeing another fire another particle no <coughs> one branch looking at the another branch i am seeing you you are seeing me i am interacting you are interacting how through the senses right yeah the senses eyes ear nose tongue etc and the mind mind should be connected if the eyes will not function if the mind is absent if the food you take in the tongue if mind is absent you don't know what you are eating so mind added with the senses 
makes you a jiva. Mind, got this point? Mind with the what? Senses. Senses. But God is there already. Without that, these are all meaningless. So he says, the divine being, which is the Brahman or the self, which is divine godly thing, added with the individual mind, individual mind, your mind, my mind, all an individual mind, and individual senses. That is called the jiva. See how simple formula? And that makes difference because my mind is one type, your mind is another type. But we are made of the same thing. At the behind is the same, same element. And that's the manifestation. Only manifestation is outside. And our actions and reactions, uh, our likes and dislikes, all depend because of the mind and the senses. These are all reporting agent. You know, in the so, so many news news reporters are there. In one incident, you find find I, I find sometimes NBC is going on, CNN is going on and capturing the information, and you see the report. Sometimes it is so so different. Why? <coughs> now we understand because the reporting media through which you get the message. That person went there and saw one aspect of it and he explained that is the fact. And another reporter went and he saw the another aspect and he reported that. No one is wrong, but it is not a complete picture. That's why we differ. We all differ because we only view one side of, according to my mental ability, I see this way, you see this way. Ah. So that is the jiva's and so many different behaviors of the individual jivas. Does it make sense? See? This is very science, scientific. Vedanta is very scientific. Swami, yeah. so the jiva is the same as the soul, right? Jivatma, huh? yes, soul. Jiva and soul, uh, right? soul, soul is small s. Okay. Uh, or a small self. S, okay. s is small. Okay. If you make it capital, then it is Atman pure. That pure capital S self plus mind plus senses is Jivatman. Got it? And that Jivatman can dream also. In the dream time, that Jivatman works. Because these eyes may not be there, subtle eyes are there. Yeah? So Jiva is also what we call ego? Yeah, ego is there, of course, otherwise I saw, I experienced. Is mind means mind means yeah mind is mind means it is a package mind means your intellect mind means your memory mind means means your ego all four together is called mind here mind intellect ego and memory all remain in the mind is it not your memory is in your mind is it not and your intellect is your one faculty of the mind when it says it is. That is called intellect. Hmm? Okay, I will finish another two, three minutes, five minutes. Okay. <laughs> now, <clears throat> how it functions? This jiva, how it functions? When it takes a physical body, then it works to the physical hand, feet, physical eyes. First you understand, in your dream, you have your eyes. But that is not this eyes. So we talked about jiva means that person who is in your dream. Think of your dream body. You think who you are in your dream. Cosmic consciousness, capital S, self, plus your mind, plus your senses. Got it? Now how this physical body it is working? Third stage. First stage, pure self. Second stage, self S plus M plus senses. And now, S capital plus mind plus fine senses plus this physical body. 
Is it not? No? Very simple. So he says, eighth verse, Shariram, Shariram, Jad Abap Noti, Jad Abap Noti, Jad Chapi, Jad Chapi, Utkra, Matisara, Grihitvai, Etani Sharangyati, Bayu, Gandhan, Iba Shayat. See, you did the chanting eight months. You purchase a book, next time we'll do it better. It is transliterated, so you can read the English and can chant. That when this, the Lord obtains the body, this physical body, when He leaves it, He takes these and goes. So it is in this body, physical body, no? When it comes out of the physical body, at the point of death, who goes away? Remember? Capital S plus mind plus the senses. That is in the package. That is now working through this body. It's like a robot. Robot's hand and feet are moving. But all internal mechanism is the S plus M plus senses. Okay? Fine senses. And now, when it leaves the body, one person dies. Shoriram, this body, yad abapnoti, when it gets, or yacha opi utkramoti, which is gets out of the body, ishvaro, and grihitto etani shangja, and takes another body. <coughs> and it functions like, you know, how it happens? Well, as the bayu means the wind, Gandha is the fragrance, as the bayu, the wind, carries the fragrance. Suppose a beautiful jasmine flower, a tree. The wind blows and you find the fragrance there. How did it go? Fragrance was here. But fragrance moves. Like the bayu, the wind, can blow it. So similarly, when the body, you leave this body, it just leave this physical body from the flower, the fragrance, and it goes to another body. So this is our rebirth. Beautiful idea. When the Lord obtains a body, the same God is, is Jiva. The same S capital is becoming small S now. This is the Jivatman. I am a small. My power is less. My understanding is less. My fear and Anger and frustration is there. But in capital S, there is nothing. So the small S undergoes another body, another body, another body. So he takes this and goes as the wind carries this sense, sense from their sources. Okay? So we can end here. <laughs> but you remember, this will be helping, helping yeah? Yeah. Avatar. Avatar is a, oh, we are, we come back with our own weaknesses because we want to experience this, experience that. But when God himself comes, he is the master of the law, of the creation. So he is not forced by their bad karmas, good karmas, by their own volition. He can come. It is like a prisoner in the prison. They will have to be in the prison because they did some good bad things. But the superintendent of the prison, he can anytime get in and come back. So he is the superintendent. God is the superintendent. When it comes into the prison and sees our condition and tries to ha ha hoo hoo, and he also suffers like us, but he is free. He can any moment get out. But for us, no, we are in prison. Five years jail. So I'll have to spend five hours. <laughs> or someone is two years. Okay. <laughs> yes. So when does this cycle of rebirth stop? Stop. Stop when you know that you are that biggest. So long you think I am this, cycle will go on. Is, is a 
identity part of jiva? Yeah. Hmm. Identity part is the question. How we associate ourselves. Yeah, big big S has no no desire because big S is cosmic. Why he will infinite? Why he will expect anything? Infinite? There is no two infinite. Infinite is infinite, but infinite becomes limited. Being here, I have my desire. We I think I am this much. I am say limited money. I want to be this much money. I want limited house. I want big house. I have a one car, ordinary car. I want. A BMW. <laughs> I want something else. So that type of desire. But if the, all the BMW is yours, so you don't crave for. Oh, I'll have to have a BMW. <laughs> okay. Now, how to get out of it? <laughs> so thank you all. Thank you, <laughs>